What is up, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of The Unusual Suspects. I'm your host, Vincent Oshana. Guys, we have one of those shows today. I'm really excited. I got home late last night, 1.30 from doing stand-up at the uh, Miami Improv. It was freaking amazing. I can't thank whoever came out and supported. I love you guys all to death. Robert killed it. Uh, Carlos killed it. Adam went on stage and actually did did well, and he was very surprising, so I appreciate everybody for that. Uh, guys, the show is freaking great. We have some interesting unusuals today. Uh, we have one of our regulars, Rob Gargiulo. Like I said, Rob killed it. Hello. We have Connor is in the house. Uh, and our first unusual suspect, uh, she's a renowned, I love this word. I love being able to use words <laughs> like that. Conservative news host. Uh, she's known for her articulate and uh, forthright approach to journalism. She has a career spanning from uh, various major news networks. She's often engages with key political figures and experts to explore complex issues. She's committed. I love this, another word, factual reporting that doesn't happen a lot and her ability to challenge uh, prevailing narratives uh she is a reporter at one american news caitlin sinclair caitlin thank you for being here thank you for having me i was a, i let you in the building i just saw pink and you she was did. on the phone i go caitlin get you in helped here. me break in i looked a little lost no you look great but you're and you're from new york from new york from new york originally and now you're yes so we're yeah. trying to recruit you to come. You have to come to Florida. I'm I'm ready to escape. I'm the last one there. Yeah, Kelly, if you want, if you want to look. Someone at, save me. Someone yeah, save if me. you want to look at that camera, <laughs> tell everybody just a little bit about yourself, and you know. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we just said it. I'm born and raised New Yorker. I've been with One American News for almost the past five years, four or five years, and uh, New York-based correspondent. I started my career at CNN. That's a little oh fun, wow. a little fun fact about me. Oh. And and um, I am 100% committed. You said it right. Give me some. Okay. Thank you to be here. Okay. And our next unusual, uh, such very unusual. I found out a lot about him in this past five minutes. Uh, former deputy commander in Afghanistan. Most recently performed the duties of undersecretary of defense for policy. That's the number three position in the, <clears throat> excuse me, United States Department of Defense. Uh, he implemented the national defense strategy and worked closely with allies and partners to achieve strategic defense goals and uh, uh, goals gl uh, globally. Uh, distinguished military career includes commands in the 82nd Airborne, 101st Airborne Divisions on the 10th Mountain Division, as well as operations in Afghanistan, Bosnia, Croatia, North Mac uh, Macedonia, Macedonia, Kosovo, Panama, Haiti, 15 books, several New York bestsellers. Uh, he served in military, education, transportation, state government, and then the DOV, uh, DOD. His book, we had to take half an hour for me to learn how to say it, <laughs> The Phalanx Code, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bri retired Brigadier General Anthony Tata. General. Great to be Was that you. a good intro? That, that's the best I've ever Like, heard. when you hear <laughs> something like that, do you ever say in your head, he didn't say this? Yeah. He didn't say this, that jerk. No, no, no. That was, was that a good that, one? That, that was a great summary. Of, I, I, of, I know, appreciate it. All, all the low lights of my, so you, my career. So, and you actually, you were surfing. Uh, well, yeah. You yeah. surf. <laughs> you were in here doing push-ups. I'm like, you're the real, you're the real I'll, I'll surf 50, 60 <laughs> times a year. I, I, I love it. And how, uh, like, how early are you going out there to, to well, hit? Well, whenever the sun's up and uh, the waves are good and the tide's right, um, uh, I'm there. So, That's freaking awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I thank live you. in North Palm Beach, you know, 10 minutes from Juno Pier, 30 minutes from Jensen Beach, all great surf spots. Oh, damn. And Rob, Rob actually, Rob, you're a surfer too, huh? I am. Long border, though. I don't got the body or the athleticism <laughs> for a short board. Yeah, to where people are like, who the hell is that guy? <laughs> But I think we agree. I'm the real surfer. I got stung by a stingray. Oh, that's, that's like yeah. But that's you know that's what killed. Stuff. That's what killed. Um, what's yeah, what's his name? Steve Irwin. Steve yeah. Irwin. Irwin. A you. crocodile hunter got killed mm -hmm. by a stingray. My and, childhood hero. And I'm telling you right and now, you survived. You know, uh, did the stingray die? Did they kill it? If it didn't, you know that stingray was going around telling every every animal, like guys, you know that annoying Australian ass. I got him. I got, got him. him. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> But uh, thank you guys both for being here. Uh, like I said, we're going to run down all the stories that we have uh, for today. I'm going to be talking about an airman. Uh, it's a really disturbing video. It really bothers me that uh, he was attacked for reasons. I don't even want to say the word because I don't want us to get uh, a strike. But it's it's a funny juice. He didn't want funny juice put into his body. <laughs> was that good, Rob? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I call Safe. my coffee. I'm gonna Safe. For now. Safe. Yeah. For now. Uh, Caitlin's going to talk about the overuse of psychotherapy uh, in the United States. Connor. Uh, on, on what kind of journalists? 
bad ones. On horrible. That's what it's horrible journalism. Uh, Rob G is going to talk about one of our good friends, George Soros, being evil. Uh, and then, General, we're just going to talk about everything from Trump to woke to military to to everything. But uh, before we get into that, guys, I just want to tell everybody, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get um, Caitlin and the General on there. Guys, the Manek app, every week I say this, it's one of the fastest growing apps. I think last quarter we had 8,000 actual Manex. It's a, it's a basically an app like, you know, Cameo, General, if you wanted to say, hey, happy birthday, and you send it out. This is different. It's all professionals. It's all pros from relationships to comedy to writing to dating to business entrepreneurs. You connect, uh, connect with anybody you want. Kelly, which graphics do we have uh, for Manect? Uh, I'm on there. God, I look good. Uh, if you want to know about comedy, you know, recovery, Rob is on there. Anything from production, Kelly's on there. Connor's on there. Kelly, that's my favorite picture of you. Damn, girl. Yeah. Uh, we're going to actually, I'm going to talk to the general after. If you want to talk about, uh, we're actually going to sign both of these two uh, amazing people on. And then, um, yeah, let's just, are we going to get just right into it, Kelly? Yeah. All right, so let me get this story because I have a bunch of questions. So if I get on this app, can I get the fan that made Kelly's hair look like you it was in slow motion? <laughs> uh, Kelly, uh, she, uh, yeah. She can 100% do that. Send her a Manek <laughs> uh, Manec message, and she'll help you with yeah. her expertise. Get yeah. There we go. Um, oh, yeah, that's hilarious. All right, guys. Manek so, changes lives. So so my story, and again, I love that you said that, too. We're going to be safe. I'm going to just say the words right. So United States Air Force, which I was in, uh, Lance Castle, he refused to take the, the fun juice shot, uh, and he was labeled an insider threat. He was given 60 days uh, pretrial confinement. He missed the birth of his first son, which infuriated. This is one of the main things that got me into the story. Uh, he, set, he was sent to a court martial, and he stood trial on five UC uh, uniform comb of military justice charges. Thank God he ended up being acquitted. He stood his ground. God bless him. Uh, so many uh, Americans were denied religious exemption and coerced into complying. Um, I do have a video. Kel, you have the video, right? Uh, and guys, so mind you, he's, he refused it. They got him locked up, and now they're grabbing him. I don't know if they're trying to give it to him or they're trying to move him out of the cell. Kelly, th that's not it. Is this And this video, is this from the, the height of the pandemic, like 2020, 2021? I, I think it's right, it's, right around, it's right around there. Kelly, do you have it? Do you want me to send it to you? Yeah, I don't have it. Either. You don't have it? Okay, give me one second. Uh, well, ju just as before she shows the video... Because, General, you were you're, you're in. When, when, what year did you get out? Well, I got out in 2009, but my, my son-in-law um, uh, did not uh, take the... The thing. The, the thing. Yeah. And, and um, he got... Uh, he was Army uh, Sergeant. Okay. And um, he got pulled from professional development schools that would enhance his uh, career development. He got pulled from air assault school. Oh, and, wow. Uh, and, and it's... And, and, you know, having been a senior leader in DOD and in the Army, you know, I had some access to people. And I, I, I said, what's going on here? And, and they checked into it. And, of course, you know, the chain of command, um, uh, you know, all told the, you know, the senior leadership, oh, yeah, no, we're not doing anything to him. But at the, at the low level, nothing really changed. And, and, and there's like 15 layers of bureaucracy between him and and the senior leadership that I was talking to and it, and it really bothered me uh, he didn't he didn't get what this airman got mm -hmm. but it was tantamount to that because here you had a great young American mm -hmm. that signed raised his hand everybody counts or nobody counts raised his hand to go fight mm -hmm. and he was being denied school being denied training that would allow him to progress through the ranks be, all because he 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 made a choice. And, and General, how, how much of this, I mean, again, my opinion, but I, I'm, I feel very strongly about my opinion. I, I believe that the whole COVID, whole situation, the fact that I, this whole lab leak BS coming from a country that is our adversary mm -hmm. and the deep state and what have you, how much of this do you think could have been a, a setup plan Especially for something like that, General Wood, this country knows that the military, this would have to be a mandatory type of situation to affect these people. Because I do have some stats at the end, but how much, how much of that do you think plays into something as well, China being such an adversary? Well, I, I think China, uh, having done this, mm -hmm. uh, 
think about how many people uh, died from COVID, six, seven million, nine yeah. million, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, the numbers are. That's a weapon around. of mass destruction yep. that they created. Yep. And the fact that the corporate media was denying right out of the gate that it had anything to do with uh, a Chinese lab, mm-hmm. um, that it was some uh, monkey in a wet yeah, market yeah, with a eating bat. Eating a bat's or, yeah, leg or, or yeah, some, some crap. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, it, it was crazy. Be- and... And, you know, I've had COVID twice, mm-hmm. right? And, and the first time was pretty early on. And, and I'll tell you, it, it, it was very, I was completely healthy. And then one day the stuff's in my lungs. I have pneumonia. Oh, my and God. and um, it, 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 it was pretty wild. Mm-hmm. And so when I look at the forensics of this and the corporate state media that we've got today mm-hmm. um, that lies through their teeth mm-hmm. on a routine basis to protect the narrative, and the narrative had to become... This is Donald Trump's fault. Of course. This is a way to get Trump. Trump's not doing enough. He's doing too much. He's doing the wrong things. Yeah. It didn't matter what he did. Oh, of course. Um, and, and, and so, and then remember those counters that were up there, you know, number of people lost and their big red, you know, every CNN. Oh, messing, CNN, the death right. toll oh, tracker. Like yeah, it was yeah, a yeah, freaking, right, like right. A, but remember, like when Biden took over, it actually got worse, yeah. but the counters it went away. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. So, so it was all. If it wasn't pre-planned um, in some way, it certainly became a what, what's that saying? Never waste a, a crisis. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Never let a good crisis go yeah. to waste. Uh, yeah. Kayla, I want to know your thoughts, Caitlin, and then I want to play this video. What do you What do you think about this whole situation? Oh, I have a lot to say, but I <laughs> <laughs> good. I'll take a little positive spin on this. I think there is a great awakening happening right now in society, and I think. Oh, I got you. I got you. I think you have to be paying attention very closely to notice it, Mm -hmm. but there is this awakening happening in this country with Americans taking control of their health again. Um, Their ladies are coming off birth control. We're all realizing where to get source good food, organic products, how to eat correctly, stay away from anything Bill Gates is pushing, (laughs) don't eat any of that. Um, And we're really, we're just, we're becoming more awake to, to what has, what big tech is pushing, what big pharma is pushing, and the message is spreading. So it's, it, it might not be right in your face on, on social media because we get canceled and censored for putting this information out there, but Americans are finding ways to get this information. Why, though, that we, we, we still don't have answers to mm-hmm. how all of this went down? Mm-hmm. A weapon of mass destruction, and we still don't have answers? All right. My question is, do, do they really think Americans are just this naive or stupid, for lack of a better word? That I we're think just, they do, Caitlin. And, I, and I really do. That's truly disturbing. But, yeah. but Americans are, are, are fighting back, and the, the, the real success story here will be if we know how to take care of ourselves and we don't have to rely on these answers or the government. And, and my and very good point, and I agree with you as well that you're, you're, you guys are both agreeing. I think the people are waking up, mm-hmm. but a lot of people lose that faith and hope because they know that this power, this control force of all these like interests, they set up the pieces to the game. So where even sure. if this information, think about it. If you talk about this on certain platforms, the majority, X is the mm-hmm. only one I believe, General, that you can talk right, about it. Right. They take you down. They demonetize you. They make you look. By the way, guys, I, I still get furious when I look back. Last night I performed and I talked about the pandemic slightly. I'm so angry of what they did to us, what they did, how they affected the kids, all these rules, all this, you know, turned, mail-in voting, all the, nothing of that magnitude is ever by accident. That's because everything falls into place so right. perfect that people go, well, they just took advantage. And I agree with the, I forgot who was, uh, Rahm Emanuel was the one about the, the, the never let a, a disaster or whatever good go to, crisis. a good crisis go to waste. You created the crisis, right. you piece of trash, <laughs> and, we're, and we're suffering. So I want to play this video. Kelly, you can fast forward it, babe, to like 10 seconds right before they go in. Like, guys, mind you, this is a senior airman. I think he did over, way over 10 years. Ke- Kelly, a little bit. Uh, a little bit fast forward, right before they go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rewind it a little bit, babe. So, guys, this guy signed up to fight and potentially lose his life for the country. Look at how they're treating him because he said, listen, I'm, I want to be exempt. I don't want to put anything in my body that can harm me. And, Kelly, can you put the volume up and just play this, guy? This is a soldier in the military. Go ahead. Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Look at this, bro. Get on the floor. Let's go. Look at this. Look at this. Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Stop resisting. Where's the handcuff? I need a handcuff right now. Look at it. We're trying to get his arm. Here, get the handcuff to the legs. 
I need a handcuff. I got, I'm going for his left arm. Alright. Oh. Stop resisting! Oh. Stop resisting! Oh. Oh. You will get tagged! Oh. You will get tagged! Alright, right, right. Just wait, just wait, just wait. I got left cuff on. Stop resisting it, or you will get tagged! You should have yelled, I can't breathe. Yeah. yeah. I had to get off him. Dude, how is he breathing down there? Look at this. Will get tagged! Two, three, four, five, six no. people around him? I got him. Put him behind his back. No, no, that's good. You can, you can stop. That, that infuriates me because, and again, I'm going back, going back to China. There are, Russia, I can care, I, right now, I can care less. I mean, I, not, I know what's going on. Ru Putin murderer killer okay he doesn't do half the shit that we do but when you see something like that general that 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 kid that guy signed up to serve and if they're doing that to their own you know easily these people will turn on us if they're if they're called upon it That's what do you think want. connor well i mean you you saw how people turned on each other when all this went down mm -hmm. they were basically bribing people to report on people who were breaking covid lockdowns and going out in public when they weren't supposed to and they were bribing you to also yeah. get the uh the medical procedure like, yeah. remember when they were like hey get the medical procedure and get a free cheeseburger oh my god <laughs> yeah. like the weirdest the blasio the blasio clown yeah, yeah. Oh. donuts and pizza and uh burgers and stuff so to, 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 your... to help offset a disease that was primarily affecting <laughs> obese people yes, exactly. <laughs> so, ah, and point. then and then the solution was you must stay inside and not go outside and get vitamin d from the sun because that yeah. would harm you and, and I mean, then they arrested surfers for being in the ocean yeah. by themselves that was yeah. the funniest yeah. one yeah. and then right. they filled in <laughs> skate <laughs> parks <laughs> with sand so right. that kids exactly. couldn't go skateboarding I get vitamin D exercise and all that. Go, go, go around, thing, please. Uh, it, you guys both mentioned uh, a, a weapon of mass destruction. While I agree, this was a bio weapon of mass right. destruction. Imagine if Syria or any other foreign country released some type of chemical agent that killed 9 million people. Do you not think that that would dominate the news cycle and every single person would yeah. be talking about it? Yeah. And there would actually be repercussions for the country that was behind that? So, yeah. right, right. But we don't think, even do think that. About China shut down all its borders, all its air travel, but they let air travel internationally go. And then oh, when Trump so. said, hey, we shouldn't let anybody that's coming from infected right. countries into this country, he was deemed racist right. and xenophobic for not wanting foreigners to come into the country. So at that point, the, the left was going, well, yes, there's a terrible disease, but no, Donald Trump is racist for not wanting those people who are infected to come to this country. Well, you, you then they blame him for the disease when it spreads through the country, which they fought for those people to come in and spread it. You remember when, uh, like, right after the, the first reports of the virus started coming out, AOC and I believe Nancy Pelosi as well came out and said, no, no, go to the Chinese New Year street festivals. <laughs> AOC even said it would be racist for you to not go to a PF Chang's right. because you think I China remember that. Like, first of all, when was the last time you saw a Chinese person in a PF Chang's? <laughs> they don't work there. Nobody anymore. like that. No Chinese person who with any self-respect works at a PF Chang's. But this was the kind of thing they were they were doing because they they wanted to make Trump a racist. Up until it was easier for them to make Trump the the guy who allowed the disease to run wild, and they switch narratives, and suddenly no one will ad admit how the American medical establishment was up to their freaking eyeballs in orchestrating this thing. They were helping to fund the labs. They were tied to all these different gain-of-function research things, and they, they just shipped it all to China, and then it came back to bite us. Did anybody hear? I lost my job because I refused to take the, the medical the, procedure. The juice. The juice? Yes. The I was juice? working. Here's the thing, though. I wasn't working in an office building with other coworkers. I was working remotely from home in Cape Coral, Florida for a radio station in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where I did a morning show from my home. I never met the people that I co-hosted the radio show with, ever. Oh. I never met my PD, any of the sales staff. I never even stepped foot inside the building in Harrisburg. I didn't go to Pennsylvania yeah. the entire time I worked there. But because I did not follow the company mandate, which was to get that medical procedure, I lost my job. Not only did I lose my job, my wife, who did, did medical billing for Florida cancer specialists from home, which, by the way, doesn't even have an office in Florida. They have no – she worked from home, and they made the same mandate through her company. She refused to do it as well, and we both lost our jobs at the same time. Yeah. And so you have – we have two kids. We have a dog. We have a mortgage. And we're, uh, we went from a dual-income family to no income at all yeah. because we refused used a medical procedure that was untested 
Oh my God! For yeah, what? Yeah, and, and, and things worked out well. Look where I am now. Thank God. Thank God. And thank for God that. for Patrick Pet David and Value Team, and I was able to pivot and and get into podcasting. But there there were millions of Americans that were put in the same position that I was in and mm-hmm. weren't able to pivot. They lost their homes. They lost restaurants. Yeah, what about the nurses? Closed. What about all the nurses in New York that were deemed heroes? We had this moment yeah. every every yeah. night where we would bang pots and pans yeah, yeah, yeah. outside yep. the windows and honoring these men and women as heroes. And then what about them? There was no apology when they were fired and lost their jobs. Great point. Yeah, where, and again, I love that you said that. And, it, and this is what and drives me. there still me. was no apology. There still is no No, still none. And, and because the news cycle, we're moving on and it's passing. That's how the media does it. I'm furious that the American people, mm-hmm. we were, guys, we were so effed with. And after hearing all these stories, and none of them are positive, none of them. Everybody, oh, I got long COVID. Or no, you got vaccine. Injury. I can't believe I just said the V word. But I think we need to get more. Guys, really take a second and think. You hear stories like Rob. I have my own story. What they did to people in in New York. Grabbing surfers, arresting them. Everybody's injured. What you're seeing with the senior airmen. We need to get madder and Mm -hmm. go in the street. Guys, to let this slide, something of this magnitude. And that's why I want to ask you, General. Then I'll come to you guys. uh, To you too, Caitlin. How, How does China... I understand we're in bed with them. They own us with the debt, technology. They steal it. It's they own our asses, General. Sorry for my for my my language, but <laughs> how how do these people of the deep state, the, the, our our politicians, these these horrible actors, how do they let a country like this do that to us in a country that they live in and that their kids live in? Well, I think how they let that happen was because it served their purposes. So you think about particularly the progressive left. They're craving about political power. You know, power corrupts uh, absolutely, yeah. right? And absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so when they get this kind of power and they saw the ability to do the Rahm Emanuel play, yep. um, I think that was right a 90-mile-an-hour fastball right down their wheelhouse that they cranked out of the park. And they were able to frame because – Think of what the economy was doing. It was through the roof. Everything was mm-hmm. great. Inflation was like 1%. Yep. Uh, you know, jobless numbers were, you know, the best for minorities in particular. Mm-hmm. This was a, a death knell for the Democratic Party. It was an absolute, they were, you know, 2021, uh, 2020 election was going to be a, a moonwalk for, for President Trump unless there was a black swan and and this happened and they were able to parlay that into a big victory and i assume they're counting on something similar this i time. was just going to ask you that before we go into caitlin's story if you had to pick general what what do you think will it, i'll give you a couple of options and if you guys have a couple please throw them in there do you think it's going to be a uh cyber attack because it's all going to happen sometime this year uh a terrorist attack from one of the ones that are coming in the border, which is obviously by, by design. Do you think they're going to stage, which I've been hearing this a lot lately. I think me and Connor talked about this. Stage some type of intergalactic, oh, aliens are here because to get everybody to come together, mm-hmm. if you have an outside threat, it's martial law. It's like, hey, guys, to hell with your laws and your rules. This thing is telling us that it's going to attack unless boom, boom, boom. And I think COVID was a test run to see how far they could get away with it. What If you had to guess, General, where are you, where are you leaning? Because I, I don't think, I know it's going to happen. I don't know when. What do you think it would be? Well, you know, I th- I've always said that the Democrats play political hardball. Well, they're in the, you know, major leagues. Uh, oh, where the uh, Republicans are like yeah. triple A ball. Yeah. And, and so they have a plan. They have the near fight, the close end fight, as we call it, in the military. And that's all the lawfare against President Trump. They're trying to death by a thousand cuts mm-hmm. internally. Biden administration unleashing all these prosecutors to do all the damage they possibly can. The far fight is the international play. So like the Afghanistan withdrawal led to Russia invading Ukraine, mm-hmm. which uh, the outreach to Iran and trying to smoke the peace pipe with them, which was useless, yep. led to Hamas and the br- brutality in Israel. And so the world is on fire right now. The deliberate igno- ignorance at the border, uh, <laughs> allowing terrorists to come in, mm-hmm. not even tr- pretending to try to stop it. <laughs> yeah. um, it's this witch's brew for something really terrible to happen. I don't have the intelligence, uh, you know, r- reports that would tell me that, you know, this, this, or this is going to happen. But you hear Ray talking about China, yep. and and you hear um, Iran talking about uh, attacking Israel. Israel, and to me, it's all um, the things that the 
progressive left want to happen. They want the world on fire because uh, typically Americans unify when we have some kind of external threat, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what they're counting on. Oh, and I, it's scary to see that's coming. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the next story. <coughs> Caitlin, you have a story on the overuse of psychotherapy in the United States. Please talk to us about it. Yes. So this topic, uh, I've done a lot of research, and it came uh, to my mind when I – started having conversations with my friends in New York. So my girlfriends, we have these group chats, making plans, and there's a couple of uh, weekdays where everyone was just off work. And I'm sitting there like, what am I missing? What is going on? Mental health day. Uh -huh. So <laughs> in my head, I'm like, this is interesting, okay. A few weeks later, same thing. Everyone's hanging out, making plans, another mental health day. And we're talking about big companies here. We're talking about, I have a lot of friends that work for Indeed, Google, Apple, okay. and they are taking three mental or four health mental health days throughout the month. Okay, I mean, the, I've never had a job where I was allowed to do that. I'm like the reporter during COVID, like, yeah, you're on the I have COVID, I'm sick, yeah. I'm still running to work, I'm sweating, I'm in breaking news, I'm getting eggs thrown at me, true stories, attacked, and I'm still going to work. So yeah. I can imagine calling my boss, like, I'm a little, I'm a little sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. Yeah. Um, so I started noticing that. Then that was the, the smaller picture. Larger picture it's like, hmm, this is interesting. Actually, my entire larger group of friends is also, they're all on SSRIs. They're all taking something every single day. For pills for like for like depression? and all For that. depression, for anxiety, for boo-boos, for I don't know, Whatever. for, for yeah. the mental health, the yeah. mental health. I was sad. And <laughs> I was sad today. Then bigger picture than that, these friends of mine, I notice, a lot of these people that I've known for, for years, the entire time I've known them, we're talking like 15 years, mm -hmm. they have been going to therapy. Okay. Abigail Schreier, I don't know if you're familiar with her work. She just wrote an incredible new book called Bad Therapy. Mm -hmm. Prompted me to kind of dive into this. So, so psychotherapy, productive, or is it paralyzing? Mm -hmm. So the current use of psychotherapy, this, this whole boom in, in the younger generation, Gen Z, millennials, to some extent the millennials, um, but Gen Z is a generation that's receiving more psychotherapy than ever any other generation in history wow. we're talking Damn. more psychotherapy more diagnoses more uh coddling more pharmacological therapy and they are the least happy generation across every single poll one in six american children are diagnosed with a mental or developmental disorder before they reach the age of eight one out of six one in six Damn. the american psychological association says that more than 20 percent of american teens identified they've had suicidal thoughts rapid growing number of young people are taking psychiatric drugs i don't think that's a surprise to anyone and yet they still report that their mental health is not okay so what is happening <laughs> you would think you're get, getting all of this this therapy you're on all of these drugs why is the mental health of our, our youth not improving what's going on so a few things to look at. Uh, there's a recent study from the Thriving Center of Psychology that says one in five young adults are already in therapy. One in four are planning on staying in therapy forever. And 33%, I thought this was bizarre, consider their therapists their friends. That's the what? last time. <laughs> That's the last person you want your friend because I don't ever want to be out and you see your psychiatrist and you're like, don't tell them shit. <laughs> I don't want you to tell anybody. Because at the end of the day, not to cut you off, Gillen, I think a psychiatrist... A lot of the time, it's you're just spilling your beans to someone that doesn't know anybody that you know, so they don't tell anybody. Exactly. You know that I mean? should that's, be the that's point. That's what it is. Yeah, so right. Please, yeah. Okay. So, so what's going on here? So, first thing I came across was just in general, we know that any anything can have side effects. So, anything that has the potential to to help also has the potential to harm. Big time. Abigail Schreier put this really eloquently in her book. She calls it the iatrogenic effect that any medical intervention can has the possibility of having negative side effects. So therapy has become a crutch mm -hmm. for this young generation. I have friends that won't even make a, a decision, a life decision without consulting their therapist. I've been on dates before. You feel bad for me because it's, I'm gonna it's feel liberal bad. New York. It's coming. Liberal it's coming. New York. I saw it in the uh, general's face. When I'm sitting across from someone that says, oh, I, I talked to my therapist about you today. And it's like, oh, God, really? Yeah. Is that when you make her quick exit to the Oh, power that's where room? the text the girlfriend's <laughs> SOS, SOS. Yeah. <laughs> th th there's an app where you can just hit a button yeah. and your friend goes, your dog's dead. And you're like, what? You just get the hell out of the restaurant. Oh, I'm great. 
in the theatrics. <laughs> no, because if you say that, then they'll go, well, let me get put you in touch with my <laughs> therapist. <laughs> they'll help God, you grieve the dog's death. A vicious circle. I'll <laughs> <laughs> help oh, you cope hilarious. with the it, trauma. <laughs> yeah. It's a real, it's become a real crutch. Oh, and then you have, uh, again, this generation that brags about being with their therapist for seven, eight, nine years. Jeez. Why have we not all stopped to, to ask, hmm, is is it working then? If you've yeah, been with... you're still... And, and we're talking about actual, you know, celebrities, people in Hollywood. We're talking about athletes. I know major athletes that are, you know, in their 20s, considered very successful, and mm -hmm. they talk about being with their therapist for, for 10 years. Jeez. So so how how is that how is that normal? I'm, and and I'm, let me ask this question. Though. Like, And how much of that, you, I mean, for the youth, I could see, you know, I mean, especially with the thing that we talked about with COVID, but, you know, mm -hmm. social media, friends, they're distancing 100%. everybody. I think that affects hundreds of big time. I, I, I don't see the problem with seeing the therapist, but I think you're right. At a point where, uh, are, do they have any friends or family? Because is it... Is a is a major cause of it that people aren't talking yes. to? Yes. Like if I have a problem, I can reach out to a friend. I could talk to Connor. Like I get it. It's not as easy as it seems. But like Kelly's one of my very, very good friends, like one of my best friends. If I have a problem, I go and I talk to her and we hash it out. She's good with seeks. She so, doesn't tell anybody. Benny, that doesn't happen anymore. Like what and why yeah, huge... my question is why why do you think it's such a disconnect of of human connection? What the hell is So there's on? a lot there a lot that goes into this. It's, it's multifaceted, but one of the factors is we feel like we can't be vulnerable with our friends. It's a huge percentage of Gen Zers, and again, a large extent of the millennial generation that feels like they're close friends, they actually can't be vulnerable with. And social media, of course, has a role in that. Oh, big time. We, we all feel that like we have to present our best selves all the time. It's always a highlight reel that mm. we're presenting. So we have less people to talk to. We have less people to talk to than previous generations. We mm. have less friends. There's this element of feeling extra lonely. Mm -hmm. So we're so isolated, this extra level of loneliness, and we don't feel like we actually have people that we can open up to. And these are, again, people that, that these generations or these, these youth, young people consider their close friends. So we're constantly also on, on these dating apps. You don't, we're not looking for meaningful connections anymore. Mm -hmm. This in our entire society is based off of, of feeling lonely. I mean, this, there's, there's no way to really escape it. I'm not on any of these apps. I, I've never, I'm proud to say this, guys. I mean, I'm single, but never been on an app. <laughs> never been on a one dating app ever. It's ever. not a good time. Not General, good you, time. Not, you don't even know. General's like, what the you hell don't are you talking about? But General, just as she, before she continues, what, what do you feel is the disconnect? What, why, why are, especially the youth, and now it's spreading to the, to the older generations, mm -hmm. why, why such, a, such a disconnect? And why are they, everybody's so sad and depressed and on drugs? And like, what? What 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 have you seen change over the years? Well, you know, I, I spent the first 30 some years of my life in the military where you assimilate right. people from all across the country. Mm -hmm. And that assimilation forces a lot of the things that you're talking about where you take different walks of life, you know, ed educated, poorly educated, mm -hmm. come together, high income, low income, come together and you work it out. You, fig you learn about other differences. And here, I think uh, that's really amazing what you're talking about, where, where social media keeps us inside our phone. Yeah. And we're very um, hesitant, uh, at least this generation is, to get out and connect, and, and, connect yeah. and have a conversation. And, you know, wh wh who's that um, uh, person everybody's supposed to listen to, uh, Brene Brown, about embracing your vulnerability and all yeah. of that? Yeah, yeah. So embracing the TED Talk. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, having friends that you can talk to and yeah. and uh, just kind of let your hair down with, go to a bar and hang out and, and have people, a drink connect, and, and yeah. all of that. Um, I, we're not doing that as a society anymore. And... I, I think there's a progressive left piece of this where their whole goal is to divide us. You think of all the subdivisions exactly. that are being created, whether it's different genders or different races or different religions, and, and they're pitting us against mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hate today mm -hmm. in the country, particularly coming from that progressive left that tries to divide because that's how they stay in power. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's infiltrated it a little bit. So you had the, um, 
the uh, medical procedure, not medical procedure. You had the Trump, not Trump. You had so there's so many Trans, binary. No, uh, yeah, binary, exactly. Binary, yeah. Which yeah. further exacerbates the exactly. feeling of that, loneliness and that you don't belong anywhere. I, right. And I have to be careful because I am part of this generation. But uh, one of the big factors in my research was this loss of resilience. It mm -hmm. is huge. We don't have that anymore. We have, and this is okay. So it's, it's That's coming. That's a great word. Resilience, yeah. resilience is loss a of resilience. When you talk about the traditional um, markers of happiness, the objective markers of happiness, are you holding down steady jobs? Are you in a healthy relationship? Are are you striving to to have a family? By per percentages here, looking at these these numbers, no. The Gen Z generation is not hitting any of these markers. Oh, Forget wanting to start a family. I mean, they can't even own a house plan or, or whatever. Yeah. They're not holding down steady jobs. And no, no one's in a, a damn happy relationship anymore. No. No, this, this generation is not dating. As, as if it's by design. Because, yes. And how many more elites have to openly come out? Mm -hmm. who, was the, who was that? Besides Bill Gates and all them, it's depopulation 1,000%. You know, the more they push this LGBTQ. Because think about it, every single letter is technically gay they're not having children okay yep. you keep pushing that shit on people the stats that you're talking about it's more and more i hear it's no kids stay away stay on your phone don't reproduce eat bugs do this it's so in your face it's like at a point and, and you're by the way everything that you're saying i'm seeing it mm -hmm. like i'm seeing it that people don't want it like it's cool now to be you know 55 and like what was her name chelsea handler she's like drinking vodka and she's like the hell with kids you're lonely i can what see it kind in of, your eye but yeah i'm 45 mind you yeah i'm actively trying like i'm late in the game but like when i hear people like rob or the or the general you guys talk about your kids i see your eyes light up and i'm like that's what i want but i do see 100 percent what you're talking about people look at that like yesterday at the show somebody's like so i heard you're having kids or something like that and he was like why look at what you're doing you have no responsibility i go no no that's the problem i want the responsibility yeah. i want some kid running around here that i have to yell at so yeah, yeah please continue. yeah okay so so those objective markers of happiness we're just not meeting them so mm -hmm. the loss of resilience where is this coming from mm -hmm. gentle parenting oh, across no. the board was what i found mm -hmm. and where did we learn this parents were taught that the traditional way of raising kids was I mean, honestly, how I was raised, a little spank here. I there. love that you said that. Yes. <laughs> that was wrong, though. I mean, I actually had therapists tell me that my parents, your, your dad was tremendously abusive. And I was like, mm. <laughs> thankfully, this was when I was already an adult. So I was able to say, you know what? No, I actually don't think that's true. I, like, my dad was not abusive. He was, you know, many other things. But no, I don't think he was ab abusive. But you tell a kid that, oh. and now they go home like, yeah, yeah. my dad's, I'm running away from home. I, I'm going to report them. You're dividing the family. Again, this is all by design. So gentle parenting, emotional regulation. What is the side effects of all of this? Loss of coping skills, the inability to problem solve, loss of direction these kids have no grit anymore my friends can't even call a doctor's office and make an appointment for themselves what? i mean what the hell is going mommy on? does it and I'm, I'm 28 years old i'm yeah. talking like this age and even older i know wonderful men in their 40s i mean athletes, i mean you just met hollywood me, but you just met me but top of the list top of the list but um these guys are so successful they're good looking they are financially well off and these men, a lot of them live in New York. And I've really started to notice this the past year uh, being single in New York. Oh, my God. Why are none of these? They've never been married. They've never even been married. It's not marriage and divorce. So a lot of this, they're, they, they've been coddled. They have this perception of relationships. They're so scared. There's this labeling also. So when you go to see a therapist and you're labeled with one of this, these disorders, it almost paralyzes you, right? You're told you have anxiety. Oh, nope, can't go on the state, can't do this, can't put myself out there. I have anxiety. Yeah, take this so, pill too. Yes, yes. It becomes so it becomes crippling. Uh Schreier touch, touches this in her new book. She has a um, study that compares burn victims, first responder, uh, breast cancer survivors, amazing people who attended therapy, and there was a control group, of course, and then those that did not attend therapy. Mm -hmm. And the results were startling. So those that actually attended therapy, they emerged sadly and with more symptoms weird. of depression and anxiety weird. than the group that did not. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's weird, but when you really think about it, and I'm actually someone that's been thrown in therapy, I've been through a, a lot in my life. That's, that's you know, neither we'll have another there. show on that. Yeah, but neither here nor there. Another therapy session for Caitlin. But I have never personally found therapy to be helpful. I'm not the person that wants to sit there and, and play victim. 
another thing we're seeing in this, not just this generation, but this this narrative and across the country now, everyone's a victim. And mm. I refuse to be a victim of anything I've been through in well, life. And I found that therapy was almost encouraging that. You've been through this, your parents divorced, let's talk about it, let's talk, like, no, I don't, I don't really wanna sit there and talk about it. Yeah. And this study is a great example. You're constantly talking about your time in the military. You're constantly talking about surviving breast cancer, going over those days and in, in, in radiation. What did you feel? What did you feel mm -hmm. then? Why would you want to sit there and continue to talk about it? So it, it's very startling and surprising, but it almost makes a little sense. Okay, so then we go into this generation and their feelings, right? This generation believes that their feelings are truly a guide to right and wrong here. Yeah. So you go into work now. Gen Zers go into work. Their boss hurts their feelings. Now they actually have a vendetta against their boss. They feel be because their feelings were now hurt. I have to now get this this person fired. They're, they're, they feel like their feelings are a guide to right and wrong. And this culture has, has crippled them because mm -hmm. of that. They need a mental health day for every problem. Whatever happened to being just a little worried about something, right? I'm a little worried. No, now you have anxiety. I'm a little sad. What if I'm sad three days in a row? That's not allowed now. I'm apparently depressed now. I've been sad for a week. Uh, Vinny, I, you're depressed. I need some pills, you, Kelly. You, <laughs> Kelly, get some pills now. <laughs> you need uh, you need to be part of the Lexaho. Have yeah. you guys seen these TikTok groups? There's literally TikTok groups of women talking oh. about Lexahos. Like it's part of like. What a, is what is this one, Kelly? What, what video is this? Oh yeah, we 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 have to play this. This is a, a really good example. What is of, this? Of play it, Kelly. Wait, what, it, what, what? Can you set it up for us? What is this? Okay, guy? so it basically is talking about uh, a good example, just illustrating in a humorous way about how this Gen Z generation has therapy and what com what comes out of it. You'll see. Okay, go ahead. So how have the vibes been lately? Low key? Off. Go off, King. I just feel like life's been mad cringe lately. Like instead of taking W's, I'm taking L's. And how's your Riz? <laughs> Mid. No cap? On God. Hmm. I hate that I understand this. It's <laughs> giving... I'm so glad I don't. Depression. Okay. Deadass? See that Deadass. even right there. He said, "What's well, giving me depression?" Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can That's you can cut right. it, Kelly. It, no it, printer. It's a <laughs> silly but humorous way of saying. So I, I don't know if that's how a real therapy session goes. I'm I'm honestly assuming it's it's something similar though. Like, oh, I'm feeling a little sad. I'm I'm, I'm feeling a little down today. You're depressed. What drug can I prescribe you? How how much? Let me ask you a question. How much of this? And I'm pretty sure you're gonna have an opinion on this. How much of this? And you 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 slightly touched on it. How much of it do you think, because I think it was a generation, right? Mm -hmm. One after mine, where disciplining your children became taboo. I'm, I know you said, you know, by the way, my dad never beat me, just a little spanking, because I think knowing the fact that there was a consequence, yeah. nowadays, these, ki these kids know, they know, they're very smart. that Because back in the day, you'd go to touch this, and your parents like, don't. And you know, you'd get too close, and then you'd get I a little... I can tell you when, because I watched it happen in my own household. I'm five and six years older than my two younger brothers, mm -hmm. and I really believe that the advent at this in the late '90s, mid '90s, it was Oprah, The View, yep. daytime talk shows, Dr. Phil. That was the TikTok self-help therapy of that time. Yeah, my oh, mother right. was a stay-at-home mother. The way that she raised me is very, very different than the way that she raised both of my brothers. Mm -hmm. More hands-on, more discipline with me. More watching Dr. Phil reading these self-help books and and that i think has something to do with my mom having me at a younger age and my brothers at a more mature time as well but i feel like in my generation i watched a switch between me and my brothers and i think it was due to the influence of the self-help books the tv shows the daytime uh programming that women at that point my mom was a stay-at-home mom she stayed home and watched those tv shows during the yeah. day then took those tips and used those tips on parenting in a real time with my brothers what do you, yeah. so what do you think John? What, what? well you know um after i left the military i was an educator I was the chief operating officer, DC public school superintendent of the 15th oh, largest you're system. Actively in the country. involved, you know. And and I had 150,000 students in 170 schools in Raleigh, Wake County, mm -hmm. North Carolina, and I had three. I had 24 high schools. I had three that were known for discipline problems. So I brought in ROTC pro J ROTC mm -hmm. junior ROTC programs and um, got them in there pretty quickly. Put some drill sergeants in those schools. Those discipline problems dried up real oh, quick. Yeah. And, uh, you know, good they're doing role. this in other countries, by the way. Oh, right. Right. right yeah. right. yeah. Right. And uh, good role models. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, you know, wearing the uniform in the school, make people pop mm-hmm. up a little bit, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, having some discipline, and, and it's infectious, and it works the other way. If you don't right. have that, it, it works in reverse, and, you know, I grew up in a household. My dad's the son of Italian immigrants that came over, and, uh, you know, it was, you got the belt if you, you yeah. know, if you... Um, didn't do something right and we were all in athletics my dad was a high school football coach and and you know mom was the good cop dad was the bad cop they knew what they were doing yeah. and yeah you get the belt then mom i've got the belt i've got the soap in the mouth but, but, okay but, but you notice this but you notice this the belt and everything look at the generation that that made the generations the moment it stopped and mm-hmm. no and no and by the way because like i said the, the don't touch don't touch kids went oh i'm not gonna get hit well you know what else can i get away with hey you know what dad I'm a woman now. Okay, son. <laughs> I'm being, this is how it works. Okay, son, you're a woman. It, it just became zero discipline. I mean, the belts, I got. I had it too. Even just a little, there's no fear. What were those six feared words? Uh, wait till wait. your father comes home. Yeah. That, <laughs> just that, let me explain something to you guys. Whatever I did, General. Scary. Karen, if my mom didn't have to touch me, Rob. If she said that, I'm like, oh, please. To this I'll day, I'll do anything. When, I'll do to it. this Whatever day, when I need. call my mom and she goes, let me get your father, I'm like, no, no, <laughs> yeah. I'll talk no, to you, mom. No, I don't need to talk to him. Yeah, leave him there. So, yeah, Kelly, you have something in closing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to close this out. So, so. There's, I mean, there's so many uh, factors that go into this. I like that you mentioned role models, General, because that's a huge one. Look at who we're looking up to. These TikTok influencers, oh, shimmy, shimmy. That's another point. The last one I want to end on is. The resolve and resourcefulness of the previous generations. That was another big part of this research. Baby boomers, boomers, the generation before them. They were this these are generations that went through world wars. Yep. And and they were still pretty happy, right? Pretty happy, pretty <laughs> successful people. And and we've lost that. We've lost what what whatever they were doing in the previous generations, the grit, the resilience. We don't have that anymore. There was the the c- conclusion of this, the, the the call to action, because I like to end on I that. I love it. It all goes back to the family home. Yep. We need to actually ha- be starting families, healthy, happy families. Families need to start instilling some of this into their children. Buck up, toughen up. Mm-hmm. Little whack here and there. Yeah, I love that's, that. That's just my opinion, but it all starts back in the family unit. And we I, need to reinstill that in America. I, I agree, and I, I think, the, the I'm telling you, and I, I don't want to be a Neanderthal, but that one day a year, it should be like national <laughs> spank your kid's ass day. So that kid looks like, oh, no. And you just have a list of all the shit that they've done because now they're like, oh, God, I, got, I better be good because that day is going to come. <laughs> just a little... A little bit more discipline and hands-on because, and you nailed it. The parents are, parents are, I know everybody's on their phone, everybody's doing their thing. Yeah. And then the kids now, you know how many kids I see just in supermarkets and everything? The parents are doing their own thing and the kid is just, they try to take a phone away or an iPad away from a kid, see what happens to them. See what happens to that kid. They don't, they have no idea what to do. It's the babysitter. That's the other thing, Vinny. They're get, they're, they have this uh, level of escapism that previous generations also didn't have. Yeah. They're escaping from all their problems, running away, hiding from them, buried in their cell phones. Netflix, Hulu, oh. they have hours worth of television to watch. Previous generations didn't have we had that. To play. Yeah, and we had to play. Pat has said something about uh, the way that he raises his children um, and that they have to earn their tablet time, right? Like they have to I've read a certain it. amount of books yeah. before they get the tablet. I've instilled that in my own home. Is it great? Like for my 14-year-old, it's okay, you can read or you can do some chores, but then if you do this, 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 and this, you can have 30 minutes on the tablet, but it's 30 minutes I love only. it, and you, and you stay on them. Because you know what I catch him doing? There's And, and I, I've caught him doing this a few times. I'll tell him to go do a chore, and then I'll walk over, and I'm not paying attention and he's in the doom scroll yeah, where he's weird. just scrolling yeah. i go no you're supposed to be cleaning the car yeah. and you're doom scrolling so you just have to i think it's active parenting can help combat that yeah, yeah. okay all right well kaylin thank you very much i'm gonna i'm gonna have a kid and i'm gonna hit it as soon as it's old enough uh, <laughs> canceled. Canceled. Uh, yeah, canceled i'm done all right uh next story connor uh horrible journalist i don't know if it's gonna be it's hating journalists yeah. i don't know if don lemon's gonna be on the top of your list so i, I i'm hoping that you know caitlin's not gonna get too offended by this one because you're not who I'm talking I'm about. I'm not a snowflake. Right yeah. You're 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 not you're not at all what I was intending when I when I came up with this. But the simple fact is you do not hate journalists enough. You might think you hate journalists enough. You do not. However much you hate them, not nearly enough. And your job is I am a staff writer. <laughs> That's, so, so, so journalist. He's, he's he so he's being I, unbiased. Yes, I I, I would I would draw a distinction between the kind of writing I do and the kind of journalist I'm talking about. But okay. you know what? I'm, I'm more than willing to be uh, hit by my own flack here. So what I want to get into is just a couple recent examples of why 
journalists have become terrible. People have said for years that journalism is dying. And I regret to inform you, journalism is not dying. Journalism is dead, buried, decomposed, resurrected as a shuffling undead corpse, and now roams around Ooh, trying to damn. consume innocence and goodness and make everyone dumber in the process. So where I want to start with this absolutely mind-blowing headline from The Independent from just a few days ago. It's like they... they <laughs> They threw. They, they, the, they threw wait, this they, is a joke. Yes. This is a joke. Oh. I, well, I, I checked this to make sure it's not a Babylon B headline. <laughs> how climate change is hitting vulnerable Indonesian trans sex well, workers. Well, how do you fit all that in there? <laughs> and I, I can only imagine. I, I, I gotta admit, yeah. I'm reading that article. Yeah. I see that headline, and I, I'm reading it out of pure lunacy. But I, I, I got a hard phone. copy of it here that oh I can give to anyone who wants to read it. <laughs> Please like, continue. Here, here's the copy. You know, I'm not making this up. I yeah. printed the article. Yeah. Because it is that insane. I can only imagine that journalists are sitting, you know, in a, in a room with dartboards of like random location, liberal talking point, yeah. special interest group, and then we whatever it lands like on. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what this article boils down to is uh, there's a lot of transgender prostitutes in Indonesia, and when it rains, they don't get as many customers. <laughs> so if climate change is making it rain more, fewer people are going out to hook up with transgender prostitutes. I'm now canceling my wow. trip. Great. Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's what the Indonesians have going for them, apparently. That, nowhere in the article do they ever clarify how this is possible or address the underlying premise of whether climate change is actually a real thing. Because according to all the rainfall data, it's not raining any more in Indonesia now than it was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're a leftist journalist, you don't have to answer these questions. You just make the argument for your special interest group. Our next one, uh, you might have heard about all the women in New York getting punched in the face recently. Yep. Just it, random people walking around. Why I'm wearing these around. shoes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she has, she, she has you, shiny, can't, you can't see yeah. it in her camera angle, but she has very spiky shoes. Yeah, they're no joke. Uh, so Salon, which you know is not regarded as oh, you know the, the, the most cutting com. edge yeah. news outlet in the world anyway, they have this one. Men punching random women in New York City. No. A desperate last gasp of the male rage fueling MAGA. No, you know, it's not real. The, 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 these are clearly the same guys who who choked out Jesse Smollett in in Chicago. They yell, "This is MAGA country!" as they punch women. I believe we have one of the videos of the the woman or what, one of these women, Kelly. If you can roll that for oh, us. Oh, this is the TikToker that got yes. punched. You guys, I was literally just walking, and a oh man. God, that's a knot on her head. In the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I fell to the ground, and now this giant goose egg oh is screaming, and I'm like... But nobody helps her. Nobody cares. Oh, nobody my cares. God. <laughs> it looks so crazy. There are a few dozen of those incidents all across major cities, New York and other places. Can I interrupt and for the yes. one? Yes. Yeah, go of for course. I have to. I live in New York. My This went... This circled in that same group chat. Everyone was probably on a mental health day that day, actually. Probably. So I got to my phone late, but... Some of my friends were complaining about this, talking how scared they are to go outside now, blah, blah, blah. These same friends, guess how they voted. Mm -hmm. Guess how they voted. Let me guess. Uh, Democrat, and they're going to still vote Democrat this upcoming cycle. That's right. That's because, what I thought. Because orange man, bad. Yeah, so they, they arrested a few people in connection with this. Let's just say they're not the typical MAGA voter, mm -hmm. and so le leave surprising. it at that. It, it, it's not a, uh, it's not Clem in a MAGA hat and coveralls who's going around <laughs> punching people, yeah. uh, yelling out, "This is MAGA country." Yeah, and but, some of them might, some of them might be coming from a shithole country. Hey, be careful. Yeah. Those are cultural enrichers. Yeah, yeah. Just getting my canceled. bad. Guess what? Guess what? Yep. It is what it is, and that, I say that. That's a culturally enriched hematoma that's forming on her face <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. But on a much more serious note. I, I want to transition over into like what the actual effect of this is because it's not just you know these ridiculous things about transgender Indonesian people and MAGA people punching New York women. Uh, bring us to the story of Dexter Reed, who is a 26-year-old guy who was just killed by police in Chicago. And this is the headline. Murdered by police. Yeah. yeah. Police fire 96 shots in 41 seconds, killing black yeah. man during a traffic stop. Yeah. Saw that. Uh, obviously. Horrific. Oh, my God. If you, if you just read that, Connor, not to interrupt, if you just read that, it looks like a firing squad, college photo. He looks yeah. like he's never done anything wrong in his life. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, what, he definitely didn't get the bell. Yeah, what actually happened oh. is that uh, during the traffic stop, this guy shot at cops 11 times before they returned fire oh, and weird. killed him. In that photo, you wouldn't see. It doesn't seem <laughs> yeah. that that person would do um, that. They, they stopped him because they noticed he was not wearing a seatbelt. That's, you know, a 
offense worthy of getting pulled over. Yep. And they were like, oh, can you roll your window down? And he wouldn't. They said, okay, can you open your door? And he wouldn't. So they tried to open the door, and he pulled out a gun and started shooting at him. Oh, my God. But, of course, uh, the media is more than willing to run with the headline of, oh, they just blew this guy away for no reason. They're putting videos of his mom out there saying, you know, they killed him, they stopped him for no reason, and they shot him. No, they stopped him for committing an offense that's worthy of getting a ticket. Mm -hmm. Then he pulled a gun and started shooting at cops. Yeah. In what scenario does shooting at cops go well for you? No, and, and, and General, just really fast, what do you, when you see that, General, like, do you think that narrative and that type of headline is something to, like, push us to a limit of to make more civil unrest like they did with the, you know, George Floyd and the riots? Is that something that you see the pushing us? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all part of this nesting of the narratives at the local, the national, uh, international levels of uh, the Democrats wanting to divide us to, to maintain power. And, and just, you know, think about the 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 level of uh, distrust that's created with a headline like that and i also think about i mean because journalists uh for the most part in the corporate media i don't count caitlin in this at or, all or connor's uh, or connor, writing um uh they're operatives yeah they're intel operatives they're they're again uh, they're operators um uh trying to achieve a specific end they're not reporting and Think about, conversely, what happened to Katherine Herridge last week. CBS News reporter, very well-known reporter for very fact-based reporting, mm -hmm. investigative journalist. She was exposing government corruption. She got kicked out of her office, perp walked out of her office. CBS News locked it and then absconded with all of her files, all of her electronics, all of her investigative journal, burned all her sources. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is a huge story. And you think about these kinds you of things. You won't hear that on mainstream yeah. media. She was, in yeah. and was she in front of Congress uh, yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. she called it journalistic mm -hmm. rape. Yeah. And bear in she mind, she, was, she just got, before she was fired, a bunch of documents about the Hunter Biden story, yeah. <laughs> about all, all his corruption and everything. And she, oh, General, she's the one, I believe, she was on one of those networks, and mm -hmm. she said... There's a black swan yeah. event coming. Yeah. Oh, then it's definitely that, That's what yeah, I wanted yeah. to bring it back to, yeah, to, please, to, to the general's point God. of, like, they've just found the next election year George Floyd. Look at how well that worked for him in 2020. Yeah. Right. So sure enough, during an election year, oh, look, police are evil and they killed another guy. Let's get the crying mom on camera and talk about how, you know, this is an evil, systemically racist country and all that. But how scary because, is it that that narrative works? Yeah. It works. Every time. Americans fall. Every time them. without right. fail, it works. But like you mentioned earlier, Caitlin, people are waking up. Yeah. It's, it works, but not as well. It, it, the, the effect is wearing off. And in the last six to eight months, journalists have really been... Uh, been getting their comeuppance on this uh, i believe we we have a, a graphic of just a few of the reports we've we've done on that uh showing how many people like how, how many different organizations have shut down these are all just a few of the reports we have on vt.com but the next graphic will show just how many people or how many organizations have either shut down had mass layoffs Thank or God. uh had to restructure so Jezebel, The Messenger, BuzzFeed, Deadspin, Forbes, Los Angeles Times, Vice, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, The Onion, all these other things, Sports Illustrated, National Geographic, Business Insider. NPR. NPR. Uh, which just, CNN Plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I, that, that's perfect that you have experience at CNN because yeah. they're, they're all up in this as well. Uh, these are all places that either laid off their entire staff, sold the business to somebody else, uh, folded entirely. Uh, one example I want to give is Deadspin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. It's I, a sports outlet that is extremely liberal. Uh, Rob, did you? Well, I was just going to say the things? fact that Vice closed and look at their yeah. YouTube channel. You go to their YouTube channel and their videos got tens of millions, oh. not hundreds of millions of oh, views amazing. on some of those videos. And and being in that industry, I know how much revenue that can generate. Yeah. And that still wasn't enough to offset the cost of running that operation. What, so it makes you question how much were they actually spending in their investigative reporting? How much were they paying their reporters? Because it, it, like they're closed completely. The website's gone. It's gone. The YouTube channel's still there, wow. but the website's done. They're no longer posting to it, correct? Yeah, they, they've shuttered the website. They're looking for studio stuff. Uh, Vice once had a valuation in the billions when it started. And then they collapsed into writing headlines like the one from The Independent. And now it's like, oh, what's it like for 
bisexual drug dealers in Belgium to do ayahuasca. <laughs> what the, the hell? Th they, they had the dartboard method of just find the random thing to talk about. And sure enough, they shut down. I want to go to those morning meetings. Do you yeah. know, oh, <laughs> you know who purchased Wait. the company after it went into bankruptcy? Uh, George Soros Which we'll ba talk bailed about him bailed oh, out the first time. That Rob has that story for us. Yeah. yeah, Soros bailed him out the first time. Even that wasn't That's enough. Right. And now they've, they've shuttered their I'll website. But uh, Deadspin is a sports blog and outlet known for being extremely liberal in their sports coverage for some reason. I don't know how you get... I don't know sports. Liberal I don't know sports. how you politicize sports, but uh. I'm sure you guys saw this one at a Kansas City Chiefs game a while back. They wrote this whole headline about... Oh, they spotted a kid wearing blackface and an offensive Native American headdress. And they went with this photo. Look, look he's wearing blackface. This was clearly meant to be racist. Oh, God. And the well, NFL... if he had a do-rag on, maybe yeah. that'd be one yeah, but thing. Hold on. And, like... and, and, and Connie said the NFL yeah. needs to speak yeah. out. The NFL must speak out. They weren't just calling for, <laughs> like, oh, like this was weird. They wanted the organization to condemn a nine-year-old. And here's the actual photo, the one that's not, you know, from the side, oh. showing that red and black... Like the Kansas City Chiefs colors. What a manipulate. And then for, what a, oh. further complicating things for Deadspin is the fact that this kid, I believe his name is uh, Holden Amarena, is half Native American. Oh, like his, his grandfather sits on the board of a tribal council I've, on a reservation. And he's damn adorable. And have yeah. you ever been to a Kansas City Chiefs game? I went to Arrowhead last year when the Dolphins played the Chiefs. Yeah. There were tons of people there dressed yeah. in face paint and had the tomahawks. They were banging on the drums. Mm -hmm. It's it, They treat it like wrestling for some of these sports teams. Eagles yeah. fans paint their faces green, so a kid painting his face, the color of the team colors is racist. But, but, look, but, but not to cut you off, but look and look at how great they are. I mean, they tried. Not, I'm not giving them credit, but look at that one shot, and somebody went, get on that. He's fucking racist. They're That's making smart. this happen. Yeah. But I love the... Who the, has time to look into that? No, yeah, exactly. No, no one reads past the headline. Right. No yeah. one's going to see the other photos that exactly. are in there. And, of course, the, the kid's family filed the lawsuit. It's going very well against the parent company. There's probably going to be a giant payout. Good for him. Deadspin was just sold to a European publishing company. Everyone at the company was laid off. Yep. And the, the brand is essentially dead after that. And that parent company has also... They're also the ones who control The Onion, which has tanked recently. Used These to be are the funny. stories that make well, me and, and that goes to Caitlin's <laughs> point. It's slowly the yeah. awakening. I mean, it's, it's gradual. Even satire in sports are not going to cut it if they're politicized and used to mm -hmm. push propaganda. Well, math is racist now, yeah. apparently. I don't know if you guys yes. And then, me. then yeah. we get to the Los Angeles Times that, you know, is a very distinguished, respected publication. They had this headline not too long ago. <laughs> How white and affluent drivers are polluting the air breathed by LA's people of color. What the? That's a joke. <laughs> that's not real. Which is basically if if, if you're I rich, I kind of want to frame yeah. that one. If you're <laughs> rich and white, you drive in a car that uh, goes on a highway that might be you know contributing to smog in black neighborhoods that you pass through or something. <laughs> it, it's very poorly defined, but like this is what even established respected outlets have collapsed into. It's just random leftist bullcrap that they push. To do, printed by a newspaper? This, yeah. How do they get the newspapers to the newsstands? I don't know. I'm, by I'm putting assuming, them on news yeah. trucks yeah. and driving yeah, them through probably. the cities, probably Seems of color. The, the general looked like he was about to jump out of his pants. General, what do you have to say about that? I, I, I it's, it is part of the connective tissue. Mm -hmm. yeah. This, they're told what to say. They're mm -hmm. told what headlines to put in there. The progressive left has to reinforce this narrative. They have to continue to divide us. They want people reading that. And they want people hating each other. Mm -hmm. That's intentional. This is not just some Reporter. lackey, yeah. not smart, no, not knowing what to write. This is a very intense. This is Major League Baseball World Series Democrat play mm -hmm. while we're playing AAA ball. Mm -hmm. The this is so intentional, and it's all the way up, mm -hmm. all the way up, and and it's nests one one level to the next level. May I ask you a question? Sure. So earlier you also mentioned the Democrats playing the long game and the Republicans playing minor league ball in comparison to that. How do Republicans shift that strategy to start playing the long game like the Democrats to compete? Because if they don't, it's not going to be in our favor, especially with an election coming up in eight months. <laughs> well, I Less think that, that this is really, from my perspective, where Donald Trump uh, comes into play. Okay. You look at all the slings and arrows that he's taken and his intestinal fortitude to continue to drive on. What's the what's the easiest decision for Donald Trump? Peace like out. Like golf every day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let me go enjoy the rest of my time. 
No, he's staying in the game because he knows he's right, because he knows that if he doesn't stand up against the lawfare, against these kinds of headlines and all the insanity that's been thrown his way is next. And, and it's already happening. You go through a nomination process nowadays, like I went through and, and several other people went through. You just get, you know, uh, uh, just villainized oh. and and it's brutal. So who wants to do that? Catherine Harridge being pulled out, locked up. Um, and who wants to be an investigative journalist now and tell the truth? And, and it is all this reinforcing overlap play. So for the conservatives, for normal Americans, uh, we, we have to have those role models that you talk about that allow us to hitch our wagon to somebody and say, you know what, that's, that's, uh, that's normal. That's good. That let's and thank God for Elon Musk for allowing oh. free speech because you know forty two billion wasn't the cost of Twitter. It was the cost of free speech. Oh, big and deal. and and so when you put all that together, um, we you know you you see the Republican Party that you see this you know paper thin majority in the House, and and you see the division in there. And you, they're you know I assume that everybody is a, a decent person wanting to do the best that they possibly can could be a wrong assumption but i always make that assumption and 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 they they are having a real hard time they got rid of santos yeah santos may be a crazy bad guy but the democrats wouldn't do that they didn't do that to the guy who pulled the fire alarm oh no they they needed that warm body for a vote right and so that's the difference right and so we have to find a way to play political hardball in a way that matches the way the Democrats do it because they are locked up and they are locked. And, and part of it is the media, which is the reinforcing fires. The corporate media comes in and will annihilate any individual mm-hmm. on the other side, or even a Democrat that breaks the narrative, they get smothered. They get just, you know, blown away by the, by the, you know, nuke missiles coming in from the NBC, CBS, you know. I think that's why people are so afraid of of Bobby Kennedy. I think that's why a lot of people are are scared of him because he doesn't really fit the mold. Right. Like, we all know who Donald Trump is by now. We know what he stands for. We know the narrative. We know his playbook. But Bobby Kennedy, uh, he's also someone that does not have to do this. He doesn't have to put himself on the line. Right. He's in he's in real danger yeah, there. That's a by, really by, great by point. doing that. Oh, huge and, and the fact that they, they openly are like, We're not giving you secret service yeah. protection. Basically, you know what that says to me? Good luck. Mm-hmm. Because we know Good luck, wink there. wink. Yeah, because they I mean they had some guy that was trying to dress up with a gun and get near him in mm-hmm. Los Angeles but, a I, mile away from where his father. Think of how criminal that is. His father, his his uncle, <laughs> both assassinated. Here's another Kennedy run and give him some secret service. Oh. Oh protection, Jesus Christ! Well, let's spin the face. Yeah. And, and how, again, how hard a decision is that? And that? It shouldn't be a decision, but that just shows out in front of. They're not even hiding it. Yeah, the Biden so administration basically like, listen. We can care less that your family has been murdered and allegedly by the government. <laughs> Good luck, right. Scott, Connor. What were you going to say? And that's kind of the thing. If you had a media establishment that was willing to do its actual job yeah. and hold the people in power right. accountable for what they're doing. That every major outlet would have an article about how the government has denied RFK. Oh, they don't even invite yeah. him on. Yeah, they, they, don't they don't invite care. Bobby Kennedy right. on do mainstream not care. networks. Yep. Like yeah. if if RFK was assassinated, yeah, they they would probably say, oh, like you know, it's, it's just think, what happens. Think if Trump you know? were were president. Yep. And denied RFK. Oh my service. God! Forget what it. What would the headline be? It'd be oh. Trump hopes assassination. Trump yeah. hopes JFK. Yeah. Part yeah. Three Trump now. wants a bloodbath. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's exactly what it would be. Right. Yeah, and and like uh, this is where I wanted to kind of turn it over to Caitlin to get your your insider mm-hmm. perspective here, because you know at, at Valuetainment we're we're working to shift the media space as well. OAN is doing something very similar. You guys are. You know, you've been around for longer, but it's a still a new thing, and like that, you know, it's not sure. it's not the Fox, you know, that's the big establishment outlet. So, like, what what do we do to move the needle on on media like this? Like, do we just keep pushing like we're we're doing and wait for all of them to get laid off because they suck at their jobs, or like what? My what word do you suggest? that I've noticed is 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 fearless. There have been so many times in my my young career that I we all pretend right that it doesn't get to us. Conservatives and in, in this media space constantly are giving speeches and saying we we stand strong. We're like Teflon Don. It doesn't get to us, but it does. It does. It's deflating at times. It's depressing. It's discouraging. 
to be censored and canceled like that and kicked off all of these platforms. There's been so many times that that me and, and, and one of my canoes and the great colleagues I have, have have felt that deflation at times. But you have to be fearless. And, and we've talked about this a, a lot already today that the American people are, are waking up. They are tuning into the stories. When I travel, I go to these rallies covering events, it means so much when these folks come up to me and say, we love you. We love what you're doing. Thank you so much. And that is the fuel. And I'm sure Valuetainment gets that tenfold because Americans really do care. These are the stories that they're seeking out, but we have to be fearless. We cannot shut up because that's what they want. They And that's kind of the uh, little moments that I've had and my colleagues as well, where you're sitting there like, wait a minute. This is exactly what they want. They want us to stop. They want us to give up. They want us to be silent. They want us to crawl to bed and, and be depressed and, and go to therapy and, and whine and cry. Uh, so, so being fearless. And I think uh, you have some great leaders here that, that believe in that mission, PBD included. So um, that's what I've noticed. And, and I think also General's point, having conservatives come together, I mean, Jesus, Republicans are so damn divided. We need that feeling of family unity. And if that starts from media companies like Valuetainment, culture is set from the top. So if you have that feeling of family and unity, you'll make magic. Yeah, and I think, and I think, and again, the future, I, I, I'll say it. I say this all the time. I had grim, I was like, no, guys, they're in control there. Mm -hmm. But the future genuinely looks bright if we keep these conversations going yeah. and never selling out. Uh, James O'Keefe did this talk, and I've talked about this before. He said, what is your price? He goes, is it 100 million, 20 million, 200 million? He goes, because if your price is not your life, then you are for sale. And I know the life is meaning, you know, dying, but I mean your life, your reputation, your your future, your, you know, Rob, we talk about me, you're feeding your family. It has to be, you have to be willing to risk it yeah. all or else this movement stops. And I, I I think this this you I I don't think there's left and right. I think it's us. I've said this multiple times. I feel like a broken record. It's the uniparty. Because how many times you see the Democrats are getting away with everything, the Republicans are barking, nothing ever happens. <laughs> Republicans need to step unless you guys are on the same team, stop doing this. I'm how many more times do we have to see Dr. Fauci? I mean, I think he's done at this point, sitting in Congress. And they're just like, you did this, you did this, your lab, your research, your funding, nothing. He walks out, nothing happens, and now he's protected by the Secret Service for the rest of his life. Yeah, Connor, go ahead, because I want to go to the next story. Look, man, if the transgender Indonesian prostitutes are willing to put it all on the line for what they care about, <laughs> the least we can do is put in that kind of effort. Ah, so That's hilarious. Uh, I, I think that's where we got to keep pushing in with it. I love you. And, dude, great story. All right, <laughs> Rob, one yes. of your favorite people... <clears throat> On the planet, I think you told me last time that you, if there was anybody that you want to go camping with, it was this guy, George Soros, uh, and him being evil. Talk to us. Look at that face. I yeah, mean, mine or his, uh, both. Oh, both. Pudding. You uh, look like his cousin. But go don't, ahead. don't say that. Yeah, Satan himself is back at it again. Yeah. George Soros. This is an article from uh, the what is it? The New York Post. Um, George Soros fund Titans grip over U.S. radio waves after controlling bankrupt odyssey uh this actually happened back in february but there's a reason why the story was reposted uh, and added to on uh the 9th of april it is because george soros is looking to expand his evil empire um in february george soros purchased odyssey one of the largest radio companies in the united states um i think it was for 300 uh, million dollars. He ended up purchasing 230 radio stations nationwide, including sports radio stations like WFAN in New York, uh, K Rock, which is a legendary rock station in Los Angeles. Um, purchased 230 radio stations in 2024. Wait, Think that about that. He's buying radio stations. In the digital age of media, these stations are going bankrupt because they cannot afford to pay their bills. Talent is being consolidated. Sales are down. Streaming is up across all platforms, Spotify, iTunes, mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, Rumble. Nobody is listening to the radio. Well, why is he buying it? Why do you think? Why would he? Not even just U.S. radio stations. He actually tried to purchase, and this was the oddest one that I found. He tried to purchase a Cuban radio station, WAQI 710 AM Mambia. It is a conservative Spanish radio station in Cuba. 
Why would you want to buy an AM conservative radio station in Cuba if you're George Soros? What, but what, Joe, I want to. What, what's your opinion? Because I, I want to say something after. What do you think about him? What What do you think the goal, the the objective is to do something like oh, that? Oh, to dominate the message. Uh -huh. that, yeah, and uh, like. Cubans coming over here, when, you know, the immigrants that come over here mm -hmm. are overwhelmingly conservative. They're fleeing from these socialist countries, and and they do listen to the radio, and they uh -huh. they do get their messaging from that. I was in Havana a year ago, uh, speaking at an event and surfing. Uh, and, and, he was uh, speaking at the event, but he did surf after. Uh, he surfed to Cuba for the event. Got it. <laughs> Help freaking General yeah, Gonzalez. I don't know about like, that. With the radio shark, on his shoulder. Uh, shark infested waters there, yeah. but um, uh, as they are here. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, it's, it's all about controlling the message. Mm -hmm. There is a narrative out there. And this, I come back to Elon Musk and X and Twitter and, and having at least one thing off. So that, that's honestly, it's what the phalanx code is about. It's a combination of big media, big tech and big government putting their jackboot on the, on the little guy. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what George Soros is doing. And I worked. So the reason this story is now in the news again is because George Soros is looking to purchase another large radio corporation in the United States, Cumulus Media. I worked for Cumulus. I, that was the radio station and the company that laid me off during the pandemic when I want to get a certain procedure done. There has only been, and I've been in radio for 20 years. I started in Philadelphia in 2006. I worked my way all the way through the United States, Cleveland, Ohio, Rochester, New York, Buffalo, Tampa, Fort Myers. I've been all over. In 20 years, the only time that I have been told you cannot talk about something, and this was by my program director and the upper management Cumulus. In fact, Dan Bongino spoke out about this because at the time, Cumulus was the radio network or the radio company that distributed his uh, radio show. Mm -hmm. There were two times in my entire life, and both of them from this company, where I was told you cannot talk about it. The January 6th insurrection, uh. where we were allowed to report the facts. This amount of people were arrested. This is what happened, and nothing else. Not a comment. And I was on a rock station. The whole point was to hear my take on issues and, and funny banter in between songs. And I was told, do not have any funny banter. Do not joke. Do not talk about this other than report the facts. The only other time that I was told that I could not talk about an issue were health related issues concerning a particular medical procedure yeah. that many Americans were forced to take. I won't say what that was, Weird. but those are the only two times that I've been told and they have the power to do it. I had to comply. I had to be silent. If I didn't do it, I would have risked my job. I ended up giving up and risking my job because I didn't want to go through with the forced medical mm -hmm. procedure. But that being said, if they could do that to me and George Soros wasn't involved, then what's going to happen next? The other part that I want to bring up radio is dead. You talk about journalism being dead. Who here listens to the radio anymore? Not I nobody. I have a Tesla, and I'm not bragging. It's the cheapest model. I don't even know how to turn the radio on in that car. Yeah. When I get on, it automatically connects to my Spotify. I listen to uh, the PBD podcast on my way home. There is – I never – click on the radio anymore yeah the only people that are clicking on radios are people that have vehicles that are 20 years old that don't have digital radio in their car they're the karen but, but, well, yeah. but, but, what, if he, but what if he's making a point kind of I'll, I'll go to you but maybe the general's making a good point he's buying all these radios all these immigrants you know, a lot of people like by the way when i was in california all those old toyotas and other trucks yeah. all they were playing was the radio in spanish well, and who and he's not he's I, not I, targeting I, I, and these people yeah. can vote and I, I, and these by the way and from what we're learning the the swing state just let's just say Arizona and Texas and uh what was it Pennsylvania or Missouri the the number of people that are voting now with no ID no nothing just social security numbers those are the workers there those are the go. people that are driving to work mm -hmm. in yeah. these old ass Toyotas just it's not the average person he's rock. not targeting us yeah he's not targeting well, us. as the driver of uh, of an old Toyota I, I drive a Corolla from 2007 gangster when I gangster. when I got it it had a cassette player in in the dashboard. I have since replaced it with a digital radio that now only connects to my Spotify. Nice. Exactly. I don't listen to the regular radio yeah. when I drive the old Toyota, but they're not, again, they're not looking at me. And why did Soros buy so many Spanish language radio stations? 17 different Hispanic radio yeah. stations Aha. he purchased for $60 million. And if this sale goes through, not only that, you know what else he also owns now? In September of 2022, Soros invested in 
Crooked Media, a liberal podcast network, which is home to the biggest podcast, arguably in the world, Pod Save America, outside of Joe Rogan, of course, PBD Podcast. Weird, weird. And if this sale goes through and he does end up purchasing Cumulus Radio, the 400 radio stations that Cumulus owns combined mm-hmm. with the 230 that he already owns from Odyssey gives him 630 radio stations nationwide in the United States, making That's George crazy. Soros the second largest owner of radio stations nationwide after iHeartMedia, who currently owns eight. And do not companies. underestimate evil. That guy... Besides just looking at him on face value, is evil. Don't underestimate it. He's doing it. On, that's so, a tactical so, move. You, you know who runs Pod Save America, right? It's a bunch of former Obama. Obama's deputy national security advisor. Yeah. Oh, very really? interesting. Yeah. And th- yeah. this bing, also bing, goes to show. For eight years. Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. It goes, <laughs> goes to show with the buyouts and everything. Soros isn't buying up individual stations. He's not like going to a bunch of different management groups and like, hey, let me buy your station directly. He's buying out with a bunch of other people radio conglomerates that manage the parent companies that manage each station, which really goes to show how on rails this whole thing is because, oh, the, the, there's there's 500 options of stations to listen to. Yeah, but they're owned by three people. You know what Correct. this reminds me of? Sinclair Broadcasting. No affiliation, by the way. <laughs> The TV network, the TV company. Yes, they. We got a peek of behind the kimono during COVID as to how they are. They basically own local television. Sinclair Mm -hmm. Broadcasting basically owns and runs all of local television. Those those puppets that we saw reciting that that speech during during COVID. This kind of reminds me of that. It was extremely dangerous to our democracy. Yes, and I've so I witnessed because when and they sound like robots. When when I first started (laughs) in radio. There were only a few syndic- nationwide syndicated personalities. You mm-hmm. had Howard Stern, you had Rush Limbaugh, Where? but th- like there, it was not syndicated the way that it is today. And what syndicated means is it's one person r- r- speaking into a microphone like this, and it's shot out to forty different radio stations. And there's a lot of talent now in that industry that sit behind a microphone in Cleveland, Ohio, and they read general liners for songs, and that gets sent to every rock station that that company owns. So there's no longer a morning show here, a morning show in this city. There's it's literally like f- like you know a group of people that are syndicated across the United States. I've had four offers since I've come back mm-hmm. and worked at Value Tainment in the past two and a half years to return to Radio 4. There's a reason why I haven't taken any one of the four. Yeah. Because this is the medium of the future and radio is dying. And I know that you wrote a great article about this with George Soros purchasing all of these radio stations. Yeah. Where can people the, find this, that? This is back in February. You can find that on VT.com. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome. And what uh, was the article? What was the, uh, this whole him buying all these yeah, stations? Yeah, it, it's about the, the initial purchase. It breaks down you know, who he's buying it with, how much money was spent. It, it uh, showcases a lot of the different stations Rob mentioned. But another thing to, to throw out there, you know George Soros is also involved in the groups that own the rights to Taylor Swift's music, right? Of course he not, does. Not, not, not to bring up that old chestnut that I know gets Vinny uh, oh, yeah. a little, little bit jazzed up. up, but yeah, Soros has been involved in the, the music production for Taylor Swift for a while. Oh, and, wait, but, and, wait till, and wait till he pulls the trigger and says, hey, now you have to go up in front of the camera and say that you're voting Democrat to get all these freaking mind slaves she to vote. She did call him out, though, for she doing did. that. Yeah, one that, that, that was during the whole controversy when she was trying to get the rights back, and I'm ashamed that I know Taylor Swift facts. You can blame my wife for that. But the, 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 this was part of the whole thing. She wanted to get her music back from that company. And the George and Alex Soros were all heavily involved in, in the back and forth between her and the, the, the managers and everything. So, like, th- this is my point. It's so managed from the top down. Newspapers, websites, radio stations, the music you listen to. It's like five people own everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. And then what they do is the radio stations have pivoted into the digital age by now having their on-air talent write news articles that they disseminate. Then they take that news article, they read it on the air, then they take the clip of them reading it on the air, and then they re-embed it inside of the news article that they're pushing out on social. So it's a cyclical echo chamber where you're just reading stories written by the people that you listen to on the radio who then read the stories that they wrote you on the radio. Yeah, yeah wouldn't wouldn't uh, know anything about that. I'm definitely not putting the clip of me talking about newspapers and anything I've written in the past. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. All right, so guys, uh, Kelly, we're going to move uh, last one with the general? Okay. All right, guys, so and, and general, uh, we again, we appreciate you being here, but I just want to, I want to pick your brain. I'm going to go around and have people come. I'm pretty sure, I know Caitlin wants to ask you some questions. I know Rob does, but uh, so you, you worked under Donald Trump and what, what was your main, what was the, the, the job title and what did your job entail uh, while you were working? I the performed the duties of Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, which is the number three position 
in the Pentagon. It's like chief operating officer of the Pentagon. Got you. And Pretty up in charge of all the war plans, oh, in charge wow. of advising the president on any incident that happens. I had several assistant secretaries of defense that reported to me. They were all regionally um, uh, cataloged so that I had one for Asia, one for China, one for for Europe, one for the Balkans, one for Africa, et cetera. And anytime anything happened, uh, Navalny poisoning happened. And so my Russia person had to present to me some options oh, wow. because we had to prepare a response for the president because mm -hmm. the president had to address a significant incident like that. What could he say? What could he not say? What would be the best things to oh, say? Wow. What could he release? What could he not release because of the type of poison that was used? It gets very technical. And so you could go in and you brief the president with the Secretary of Defense or sometimes without and lay out the different options and say, recommend, uh, you know, this go out in a press release as a statement from you, et cetera. And, gotcha. and, and or, or, you know, war plans or uh, things happen in, you know, Syria, Africa, you know, the, the hostage rescue. You know, probably the, my, uh, hey, I've been in, on the presence of Donald Trump many, many times. Mm -hmm. he, he has never been like the psychomaniac that he's uh, portrayed. Grabbing the steering wheel yeah. of the Right, right, right. He's, never he's happened. always never been happened. a gentleman, always been uh, a good listener, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. um, funny. Uh, yeah, funny. He's so super funny. funny. Very funny. Yeah, and, Great DJ, too, by the way. Yeah, and, you know, um, I want to say it was in October, late October. We did a hostage rescue that was very, very risky in Niger. And... It involved so many different moving parts. We were up all night, uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs and, and uh, the, you know, in the Situation Room. He didn't have to do that, mm -hmm. but he rescued an American. It was like a week before the election. If something had gone south on that, oh. God forbid we'd lost a soldier, wrecked an airplane. There, I mean, there were thing, things that could, everything could go wrong there, but it all went perfectly smooth. Um, uh, that takes a, a certain amount of intestinal fortitude. And nobody knew who this hostage was. He wasn't doing it for the publicity. He did it because it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And and so it was a real privilege to be able to work in that position as a senior DOD representative, uh, being you know interacting with the president, um, talking to all of our troops um, deployed all around the world. I, I went to about six different countries uh, in my time there when uh, you know, I, I was in Riyadh on January 6th, actually, hmm. and um, uh, right right before we changed out. And I was working a major defense deal with uh, Khalid bin Salman, who was the deputy minister then, now he's the minister. And, and um, you know, it, it, uh, the, the, the notion, the reporting that we did not have good relationships with our allies and partners was just flat untrue. Hmm. Um, and when you look at what happened in Afghanistan, the Biden administration fundamentally broke NATO. Nobody talks about how 29 other NATO nations were left holding the bag there. We just left. Mm -hmm. And I had been talking all the time to my um, our NATO partners when I was the undersecretary. We came in together. We modified troop levels together in Afghanistan, and we're going to leave together. And, you know, we left 2,000, 2,500 at Bagram Air Base. We had a plan for that. The people coming in, they wanted nothing to do with us, our planning, um, in anything. They And, in fact, they wanted to do the opposite. And, and it was really uh, disturbing um, because I've been a public servant serving this country at the national level, um, state level, city level, county level. I've been a superintendent. I've been a chief operating officer. I've been a secretary of transportation. <laughs> and public service has been my lifeblood. And, and to see these people come in, craving power-hungry politicians coming in uh, or political appointees coming in, they wanted nothing to do with the goodness of what we had done. What they wanted was uh, with hubris and arrogance to come in and just take over. Uh, so, General, how, how much, how much, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is going to be, but uh, how, how much of all the chaos that's happening right now, you know, globally, Israel, Hamas, Russia, Ukraine, Houthis, I mean, I, I could keep going. How much of it is because of the fact that Donald Trump is not in? Because I, I feel I, personally. I it's, it's 100%. Uh, what, I, what, I, yeah, please the, unpack. Uh, the Biden administration, uh, the philosophy that they have 
to the extent that they have one, is is one of a do everything the opposite of what Trump did. We were doing the Abraham Accords. They shut all that down. Mm -hmm. They didn't want peace in the Middle East. They didn't want economic ties. Economic ties was the genius behind uh, the Abraham Accords. Get get the Saudis and the uh, Emiratis and the and the Israelis uh, uh, building businesses together to build those those bridges. Um, that so. Uh, they came in, they purged people off of all these presidentially appointed boards. I was uh, appointed by the president to the Defense Policy Board, very prestigious board. Kissinger's yeah. was still on it when I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Albright, Madeleine Albright was on that. And, and it was always tradition that the outgoing undersecretary was on this list. Secretary Austin just purged all those. I know Lloyd Austin. I was his deputy command in general when he was commanding general 10th Mountain Division. Oh, wow. I was an airborne battalion commander for him when he was an airborne brigade commander at 82nd Airborne. Oh, wow. I, so what, you know, what did I ever do to him? But he, he took everybody off these lists. Mm -hmm. And you talk about, you know, sort of fascism and totalitarianism. That's really what we've got going on here. And this group think that they have the best ideas. They don't. They they are so flawed in their thinking that they have they embarrassed us in Afghanistan and fractured an entire generation of veterans that served there. Yep. I had soldiers calling me crying, and say, "Sir, what you know? Did, did my time count? Was it wow. worth it?" And and then that led directly to Putin saying, "These guys are Keystone cops," and he moves to the border of Ukraine. He attacks Ukraine. There was no d diplomacy. So think about what I said about fracturing NATO mm -hmm. when we left. Mm -hmm. What better way to kind of paper over that than to have a threat against NATO? Big, of course. Right? All right. So, so now they do no negotiation. They know that NATO's all mad at them. And I know that NATO was mad at the United States. And, and then you have the president getting up there saying, oh, you know, we got the most cohesive NATO we've ever had, which is utter, utter BS. BS. And, and uh, so then, uh, so that's two intelligence misses, really. You think about Afghanistan and the Taliban and then the intelligence miss. What was, what was Blinken's offer to Zelensky the night before the invasion? He offered him a ride out. He, remember this. I, I don't know if any, it's never talked about. It's, it's your famous journalist. Um, Z Blinken offered Zelensky a ride out of Kiev on the eve of the invasion. Okay. Think about that. I'll give you the headline a different way. Biden offered to Putin to decapitate the Ukrainian government on the eve of the invasion. That would be the headline if it were Trump. Wow. But so... Um, Zelensky famously said, I don't need a ride. I need ammo. Oh, wow. Right. So think, and now think about how, and remember the Biden administration denied the, um, Polish offer of MiG jets very early on in the war. Mm. Think about if Trump did that. Oh, forget it. Trump helps Putin by denying, yeah. um, refusing arms to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is kind of turned, but it was a big intelligence miss. The intelligence miss on uh, October 7th last year with Hamas. So that's three major intelligence misses. And, and then um, uh, we don't know what intelligence miss we have had on the border because it hasn't manifested yet. Not yet, but it's, but it's definitely yeah. coming. We're gonna, right. what, so, to say again? so that's I'll, – yeah. I'll shut up now. No, 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 no <laughs> please jump, jump because, because all those that you're saying, especially the Hamas, the one that bothers me the most besides, I mean, our border and – that one terrorist, that known terrorist, Rob, that was like, oh, soon you're going to know my name. Mind you, no arrest, no nothing. He's still in our country. Yep. The Hamas, uh, just briefly, General, the, the Hamas-Israel thing, Egypt knew a year in advance. They let them know how, how in God's name can an attack like that happen with one of the most secure places in the world. They asked uh, John Kirby, uh, John Kirby, uh, I think it was two weeks after, and he said, now's not the time. Famously, now's not the time. I tweeted at him. I said, is now the time? It's been th almost 40,000 dead. When is the time? How, how could something of that magnitude go miss another uh, intel uh, uh, failure of intelligence and for those terrorists, for Hamas, to run wild for I'll six to 12 hours? That, that whole intelligence apparatus is focused on the American people mm -hmm. uh, to a large extent. Uh, the, the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, they're being weaponized against the American people. And because of this philosophy that this administration has uh, it it misaligns their purpose 
their purpose is to provide intelligence to the decision makers in the federal government to be able to provide safety and security to the United States, home and abroad, people and property. Mm -hmm. That is it. Um, and they, they are hamstrung in their ability to do so because of this misalignment in philosophy where they are, they are given the mission to help them, the, the people in power politically, mm -hmm. which is so far out of line, it's against the Constitution. It's, it's not coincident with what they're supposed to be doing. And so that's why we have these intelligence failures, because they're looking at the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and and they, have the bad, they have bad guidance. And, and uh, so, you know, they're 0 for 3 right now, <laughs> Afghanistan, Ukraine, Israel. Yeah, what's next? So what's next? Yeah, exactly. Well, question off this. I'm curious your thoughts as to a, a perspective like Vivek Ramaswamy's. It, it, it's been a little bit popular. He wants to disband all of these three-letter institutions, right? The CIA, the FBI. Um, is just disbanding like that, that? Do you see that as dangerous? I mean, we, we need these institutions in place, but we need them not to be weaponized against the American people. So is his, is his view to you dangerous? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's dangerous. What I would say is that um, what I hear him saying when he articulates these, we'll just you know, eliminate one and three people, two yeah. and three people, whatever, um, is, is a uh, bureaucratic change agent that will result in change. Because a lot of people come in, they, they make adjustments on the margins, and, and the rot in these institutions never gets impacted. Right. So he's trying to impact the rot. And, and you know, sometime from, from a negotiating strategy, you say, I want, I want this much when you're really willing to accept half of that or whatever. So when he says, let's, let's fire two and three, two of three, that might be a good strategy. Now, you know, I saw, I was a captain in the Pentagon for a year and it was kind of, you know, I was wandering around there, you know, doing some crazy job, but I, I would come home and, and, and think, you know, you could get rid of uh, at least one in three people in this building and have no impact. <laughs> and, and honestly, it's what, when, it's when, funny, when, but it's sad. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. I mean, these bureaucracies just built, you know, it's the old thing. You haven't spent, you know, 80% of your budget by um, July. You better, you better, you know, flurry and, you know, start spending all this money. Instead of taking an introspective look like, do I really need all this? Do I really need this directorate? Do I really need this this piece of bureaucracy mm -hmm. here? Like the whole DEI thing, you could flush that down the toilet and save billions of dollars, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Within the federal government. Yeah. You could. Yeah, what were you going to say, Connor? So, so, General, I wanted to bring it back to the uh, thing you, you mentioned earlier. You said that a lot of the problems we've been having internationally, 100% because Trump is not in the White House. Now we have Biden. Uh, as Vinny mentioned, we have Russia, Ukraine, Israel Hamas and you know Hamas being a proxy for Iran Iran's now threatening open action against Israel China's circling Taiwan and uh, Xi apparently told Biden a while back like we're we're going to it's going to happen we're going to go into Taiwan uh so these are all problems that have cropped up under Biden like you said uh my question I guess is is putting Trump back in the White House enough to stop this now or does there need to be another solution like is it just his presence in the White House that can fix it? Do there need to be big policy changes he's bringing with him? Or like, what's your what's your take on that? Well, I, I think part of it is having the president, but it's all, a lot of it is also the people he hires, right? And, and you know, having worked in these kinds of political pointy positions before, um, you need to hire people, and he knows this, that are consistent with your vision. And that needs to be the litmus test. Do you have the vision of America first? Do you have the vision of, of serving the American people first and not some special interest groups or some, you know, is Islamic radical, you know, progressive left wing party in the in the United States? You know, all people matter within the in the country. And and as a president, your first job is the safety and security of, of American citizens. So him getting elected is a big first step because it sends a signal. Think about it. You know, uh, Putin invaded Crimea under Obama, right? Took Crimea, took that base, made it a major Navy base in, in the Black Sea. Um, there, was, there was no, like, uh, gnashing of teeth. Uh, remember, he said he had more flexibility after the election, right? And then a year later, Putin yep, invades Crimea, video. right? So, so then Trump comes in, nothing happens. Weird. Right. Because he was unpredictable and he rebuilt the military He invested. He increased the military budget. 
And then Biden comes in. What happens? Putin continues into Ukraine. And so his presence uh, is, is significant. And then if he brings the right team in, then I think uh, what could potentially happen is you could reverse a lot of this. And one of the things that I noticed about President Trump was that he, um, I talk in terms of the levers of national power. You have diplomacy, information, military, economic, many others. Uh, he was a master at pulling those diplomatic information, military, economic, coming in, you know, when, when Syria broke a red line on, on chemical agents, he, he used the military economic or military lever. With China, it was almost all economic and information and diplomatic. Uh, he didn't want to uh, lead with the chin of the American soldier. Uh, and and the, that ability to understand the nuance of how to pull the levers of national power, in my mind, are um, uh, he, he's the best I've seen at it because too often we lead with the chin of the American soldier. Okay, guys, that's it for us. General, thank you so much for being here. My, for my privilege. Last, hopefully you, you come back if you're not, if you could fit us into your uh, surfing schedule. <laughs> Phelan, thank you so much. Uh, I had a blast. Guys, the general's book, The Phalanx Code. We're going to put the link. It's on Amazon, correct? It's everywhere. You know right. what? I might yeah. have to take this one and have you sign it. Uh, and last, I'd like to show a video. Uh, Kelly's going to play in a second. So, guys, uh, a couple weeks ago, a, a fellow co-worker uh, was like, Vinny, you have to go to this place that's called Pineapple Pete's. And I'm like, okay, w w whatever. He's like, no, no. The guy's a character. I walked in on the wall. It's like big pharma, holistic. Long story short, this guy had like nine medications. He actively has a brain tumor that he's, it's going, it's getting smaller. I don't know, you know, it's still not looking good, but he's doing all holistic. Uh, it's, it's, he's curing himself. He unplugged from the matrix, as you're going to see in this uh, video. He get, he's barely making any money. He's just giving, like you talked about earlier, about the food and, mm. you know, natural thing. And he's, he just keeps giving me all this stuff uh, for free. Uh, McDonald's, which is next door, these, the poison seller McDonald's, complained that his sign was too big, too loud, and taking away business because, mind you, his burger, Connor, you tried the burger. I, I just had lunch at Pineapple Pete's last week. One of the best burgers I've ever had. I've, I've had elaborate burgers in pretty much every city I've ever visited. Mm -hmm. This was just a beef patty with lettuce, tomato, and onion. But and it was... An experience, man. <laughs> wow. And it was for yeah. $8. Great. Oh, the reasonable prices for Sign some of the highest up. quality meat I've eaten on a burger patty. Yep. And it was delicious. And the guy's also telling you that Big Pharma is a problem. Yep. He's a national treasure. He is a freaking amazing soul. I autumn general. Sounds like, like my dream day. Oh, he's the type of guy that you you talk to. So long story short, um, I'm I I I recently he doesn't know about it. I started a GoFundMe page. Uh, that's gonna you'll hear about it after this video. But the sign that they took down, he can't afford it. It's thirty five hundred dollars to get the sign put back up so he could get uh business. The guy is like, Connor nailed it. He's a national treasure. He cares about people. Every time I go in there, he's generous. He's loving. He's caring. And I I, I want to give back. I've already donated. I started the donation, but I want to play this quick video and then uh, we'll wrap up. What's up, guys and gals? Vincent O'Shana here. So recently, a co-worker and friend of mine, David, told me about this place called Pineapple Pete's. He told me about the guy. He's like, Vinny, you got to meet him. His energy. He, he's out, he's holistic. He had nine medications he stopped taking. He's giving back to the neighborhood. He's giving back to the community. Barely making any money. They made him take down his sign because McDonald's <laughs> poison sellers complained because his sign was too yeah. big. I'm gonna bring you guys inside, let you guys hear from Pete himself. Yeah. Look at this guy, he's all right, character. Pete, say hi to everybody. Hello, so doing? Pete, can you please just really quick, who are you, what are you doing here? I had multiple, multiple medical problems. Okay. They wanted to do brain surgery, basically. Okay. I was on dialysis for five days. Dialysis? I got, I got tired of the, the hospital. I unplugged myself from dialysis. Okay. Incurable skin disease, something from the ocean. I got all these different elements okay. telling me to prepare myself for the rest of my life. Okay. The mask, the asthma, all this fucking nonsense. <laughs> I figured it out. I basically unplugged from the matrix. So that's what I opened up. I opened up to share the truth. All we need to do is eat better, Stop taking fake chemical drugs. Put the right food in your in your system. Put organic food, not fake food. We're all eating fake food. Yep. And so, Pete, where are you? Where are you, you're located? Where? 1332 East Commercial Boulevard, okay. Fort Lauderdale. So you met the man. You heard his story. You know what he's about. He's about health and giving back to the community. 
So what I want to do, guys, I want to start a GoFundMe for Pete to raise $3,500 so we get a new sign that's already been approved. It's been approved by the city, but he can't afford it and he's losing business every single day because he doesn't have a sign. Deli made so I want to do that. Shout guys, out Deli. I'm going to put the GoFundMe link in my description. Yep. Kelly's going to put in the description. Hell guys, if you yes. Can, Please donate. Giving back I'm gonna donate. This guy, he needs I want to get this knocked out in a week if we can. All right, Kelly, you can guys, stop him, my love. Amazing but uh, guy. yeah, guys, so if you're if you're watching this, Kelly's gonna put the link in the description and in the chat. Guys, please, if just 30 of us uh donate uh, enough, this guy could get this sign. Uh so general, just really fast, if you want to, besides besides your book, can you please tell everybody at home how to find you, what to what, what you want to promote and uh yeah, sure. I, you know, my website is ajtata.com, ajtata.com. And uh, I've, this is my 16th novel, and it's uh, from St. Martin's Press, Macmillan. And I also have a business called tataleadershipgroup.com. You can, uh, if, if you need a good um, access to the government or global uh, assistance, uh, I'm there for you. So uh, thanks. It was a great time, and, and I hope to chat again. And, General, you're definitely gonna, we're going to get you on my neck after this. So if you guys want to talk, by the way, he might tell you some secrets on my neck. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just telling everyone where they yeah, can find yeah. me. You can find me pretty much everywhere uh, i'm on x at c sinclair tv instagram just caitlin sinclair with a c and uh i'm hosting at mar lago in a few weeks so yes. Yes. buy some tickets uh it'll be exciting and thank you so much for having me this was awesome oh God, we're gonna we're gonna do we're definitely gonna do more in the future but uh everybody at home i love you guys thank you guys uh this is an amazing show we will be back next week kelly on Wednesday, tuesday we don't, we'll figure, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back, <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, next week. But guys, as I always say, love each other, Wednesday. Love each other, take care of each other. It's us against them. And guess what? We are stronger. But until next week, God bless you guys. Be safe and we'll see you soon.